Lori Griffin. Hey, honey. I love you. (laughs) I love you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about with you is the fact that when I met you, I sought you out. I was going to a networking event, and I saw your name on the roster, and I read your bio, and I was like, she has worked in the entertainment industry, she is an entrepreneur, she's writing a book, and I want to know her, (laughs) and by the time I saw you at that event, you were so popular and I didn't get to say hi to you and so we met offline and I felt an instant connection to you. Thank you. And I just, you know, I, I want to just say, like, I see you as somebody who is driven, you hustle, you grind, you get stuff done, but what matters more to me than that is that you are tending to the little girl and you're yes. doing your healing. Mm-hmm. And you've, you're very open about therapy and yes. getting care mm-hmm. and understanding your story and how it impacts how you function today. And I just would love to just hear what it's like for you to be a successful entrepreneur and be focused on your positive mindset and your mental wellness. Well, thank you, Kim. No, and thank you for all those kind words. Um, you know, I think 2020 taught us a lot. You know, um, I was... You know, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. I work in the hospitality industry, and we were devastated. I mean, in 2020, we all lost our jobs. And, you know, you wake up one day, and I mean, in the hospitality industry, we are hustling every, I mean, we are selling. We are going to networking events. We're talking on the phone nonstop. We're working at 10 o'clock at night. We're working events. And we were all just very happy. And it's like, okay, so mock 10 with our hair on fire, but then, you know, and then it stops. And, you know, I grieved for about six weeks. And I thought, what am I going to do? Like, and I thought, okay, I'm going to let myself grieve this. And then I realized, I was like, okay, the one thing I can take control of is my health. And that's how the Nitro Chronicles was born. That's how I started this health journey. That's how I became a, like a health and wellness advocate. So all of these things happened. But what I also didn't realize that in the middle of this journey is that I would get COVID-19. And when I got sick, I was, it was hard. I mean, we had literally, we had, you know, people didn't know about the the virus. Nobody really understood the virus. I felt very isolated. I was alone for 26 days. I had friends that wouldn't see me after that. And after I lost my third family friend to COVID, um, they died. They were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I grew up. I was like, my best friend said to me, he's like, you've got to go back to therapy. And it was at that moment that I kind of just had to be like, you're right. You know, we were with all my industry friends, we were kind of congregating together but we also know I couldn't live in that grief forever. I couldn't you know, stay in that place. It was really hard. And so as I'm taking control of my physical health and then I am you know, starting to help all these men and women with their health journeys and I'm on the phone with them. And then I started my own, you know, so I back to therapy and being with my, you know, my therapist and really like working on myself. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I don't want to just help people like lose weight. Like, you know, there are many people out there. There are trainers, there are people doing that. But I'm like, I want to help people heal from the inside out. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. (laughs) I mean, that's really what I figured out is that, you know, like a health journey is so mental. And so for me, it was like, I want to make sure that like I'm helping them and I'm referring people to, you know, to, you know, recommending, like maybe you need to go talk to somebody because I think what we don't understand, and I think the stigma has been really hard with therapy is that, you know, people don't want to say, oh, I need to go to therapy or I'm, you know, I'm in therapy, but I will tell you right now, therapy saved my life in 2020. I have, I went full time for a year. I am still going, you know, at least twice a month. And it's, it's those conversations and it's that my willingness to like be open to healing myself and healing who I was and what the trauma I went through as a small child, you know, all of those things that happen, you know, even through in my adult life, you know, I'm actually now being able to work through that with therapy. And then it makes me feel like that I'm a better coach, mm-hmm. a better friend, a better, you know, um, advocate for, you know, others because I am healthier. Yeah. And I think that's what we, we forget. And, <clears throat> you know, I, we can get into this too, but, you know, so I work with so many women and, you know, women just don't put themselves back on the list. <clears throat> and yeah. that's been the harder part. So you obviously are an advocate of therapy. Yes. Can you tell me two other things that you do on a regular basis that helps you stay mentally well? Yes. I th- you know, I, when I talked about putting yourself back on the list, you know, when I talk to women, I, I hear them say, 
you know, I'm, I'm taking care of my child and I'm, you know, wife and I'm doing all of these things. Well, you have to take a minute to breathe. You have to like take that time for yourself. So I tell people, I'm like, whether that's go take a walk or that is like to read a book. So what I call that honestly is kind of like, I, I do a lot in my coaching with self care Sunday, you know, to talk because I want to just start talking about bringing awareness to those things. And it's like, you know, it's hard to get people to like carve out that time. But sure. I'm like, if you are not well, if you are not physically and mentally healthy and happy, you can't take care of anybody else. Sure. Such a great point. So Lori, you are obviously a huge advocate of therapy and coaching. Mm -hmm. And obviously I appreciate that as a coach. Absolutely. What would you say are two other things that you do on a regular basis just to maintain your mental wellness? Okay. So but like we were just talking about, like I'm always asking women to put themselves back on the list because what I think helps me focus on my own mental you know, wellness and health and the things that I need to do is to make sure that I'm helping others. That's just like that. I just, I just feel that I, I enjoy that piece. And so, you know, if we're not healthy and not taking care of ourselves, then we can't really help anybody else. We can't be the advocate for that, you know? And it's like, as you know, if we're last on the list, then everything is kind of falling apart. Um, some things that I do in my business, um, like I, I talk to people about self care Sunday, but at least it's like, you know, if we start just bringing some awareness to like, what are you doing for yourself today? How are you taking care of yourself today? Um, I also even do a thing called non food rewards because I'm like, what are you doing for yourself as you go through this journey? So, and you know, I'm always encouraging my clients, my friends, everyone. It's like, you know, make sure you take a walk every day, read a book, whatever it is that's good for you. If that's take a yoga class, if that's go kickboxing, whatever that looks like for you to take care of yourself, feel better. Because I know that you and I practice very different ways to take care of, you know, our mental health. Sure. You know, you love to be outside and like sometimes I just need to sit still. You know, you're an Enneagram coach, I'm a seven and you know, my mind and my, my being is very busy. That's why we go to the beach and sit outside <laughs> together. Yes. So, Lori, as we wrap up, you know, I think about, again, your energy, your positive mindset, all Thank that you, you do to stay well, yes. and all that you do to help other people, Thank even you. your friends. <laughs> That's me, too. Um, and I think about people that I've known that didn't know how to take care of themselves. Sure. And you know me enough to know this is why I'm on this mission because I've lost people. Right. And I don't want to lose another person because sure. they don't know how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So as someone who is doing all the things, right. enjoying the entrepreneurship, enjoying the success, still working very hard, still managing disappointments, what do you know now that, you, that helps you focus on your mental wellness as an entrepreneur that you would like other entrepreneurs to know? Okay, well, the main thing is, is it's not going to be a perfect journey. There are going to be a lot of bumps in the road and um, it will change. So, you know, I really never set out to be a health coach. I was looking for another job when, you know, when I figured out, oh wait, I really like this and I can help other people. You know, I had an 85 pound journey and I knew what the struggle was. And so when I, when I talk to, because people ask me sometimes like, how did it happen? What do you want next? Where is this going? And I tell everybody, I'm like, you know, it is, it is evolving every day because, you know, the health coaching has grown and grown. And so now that's been a big piece. And then I'm also like, I want to finish the book because, you know, I really want to be out there speaking to women about, you know, just like we've talked about, like all the hard topics, because I think so many women are not dealing with, you know, miscarriage, sexual assault, um, you know, divorce, adultery, like all of these things that are happening to them. And if we, if, if we can like go out there and reach out to other people, like we can make a big difference and a big impact. And then make, because that yeah, bridges the gap, gap between people thinking like, Oh, it was supposed to be perfect. Yes. And then you want to help people and go, no, I know it's not. Mm -hmm. And it's all human and yes. let's do it together. Yes. I and, love that. And, and, and honestly, it's like, when an entrepreneur like starts or you know is trying to continue and you also have to kind of like give yourself a lot of grace yeah. because there will be mistakes you know i really launched my business and made it perfect later like i read a yeah. quote that said that and i was like okay this is like what's the other phrase <laughs> like it only took me 40 years to be an overnight success yes. yeah. and you know yeah. and it's like and i think it's not it's never too late yeah. you know i mean i have a lot of people you know, at the beginning, I, I, I would say there were probably a lot of haters, and I, I, we still deal with that. And I think the other the other thing I'm really dealing with in therapy is that not everybody's going to love my story. Yeah, 
That's and so that's, important and that's for hard. entrepreneurs to know. And that's hard because I, and, and, my, and my therapist literally said, she said, it, this is something we're going to have to really work through. Yeah. And because, you know, I feel like my story is important. It's not easy. If topics are not easy. It's not always going to be, you know, the easiest story to tell. But I think it's important. And I think that the people that want to receive it will. And the others that won't, I have to let them go. Yeah. I think that's such a good point because I, I, I was just saying this to someone else earlier today that I don't know any entrepreneur or entertainer who's doing their healing journey for themselves right yes. right and so we have to trust that when we bring our you know most people most entrepreneurs are using their stories they're using their adversity they're using their pain to make the world a better place to help other people heal yeah. and not everyone is ready and that's okay yeah. and we just want people to know like keep going keep healing yes. keep discovering that new version of yourself yes because when we're healing, we heal each other, and yes. when we heal each other, we heal the world. Yes. And all the great things happen. And that's what we're ready for. Yeah, I always <laughs> say, like, I want you to be wildly successful, and I want you to enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. I love you. I love you.